And we are back. I know you all missed us because we haven't been posting a bunch of random videos all over the place for the last week. Nope. It's what happens when we get excited because we have a super special guest today, Tara Van Flower. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Yay, Candy, would you like to, <laughs> Candy, would you like to talk about what we're going to do today? Okay, so today we are going to put on old school goth makeup while we interview Tara and she does her tour makeup. It's very basic. <laughs> That's okay. It's fancy. It's fancy though. It's fancy. Like, let's give it a name. It's the the tour look yeah sure. yeah it's a uh, budget ghetto look <laughs> awesome <laughs> same i i've got nothing but wet and wild in front of me and i don't know where i got half this like i have an alme and i have a yeah. knit um and then of course all the rest of is wet and wild and then i have a black opal which i love this brand oh my god i love them i don't know that one it's i had a two junkie lipstick Ooh. Yeah, I literally have one lipstick that I've had for probably five years. I don't know, but that's that's what I'm going with today. So but it's multi-purpose that works. I've had my mascara. Well, actually, I've had this eye makeup for like eight years. So yeah, who yeah. cares about expiration dates? Germs, schmerms, who cares? Expiration dates are for wimps. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Look it out. I don't think this company exists anymore. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure Wet n Wild bought them and just absorbed them. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah. I love Wet n Wild. I know. They're, hey, so they're always Jeffree Star approved. And Jeffree Star is Should, we, should we mention him? <laughs> We should. Yeah. Let's make yeah. it turn into a drama channel. Yeah. So tell yeah. us, catch us up on the Jeffree Star j drama there, Tara. Oh my God. Well, everyone hates him. <laughs> um, he's. I mean, do we really want to go into this? I honestly don't know. Who he's he the Voldemort of cosmetics. Yeah. He? Um, he's he's very big on performative activism. He does not care about. I don't know who he is. Press. So yeah, my heart was like, oh, okay, are, are we are we loving somebody? Sure. No, no. Um <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't really care either way. Like to me, I'm like, he's a dick, he's not a dick. What who cares? I don't care. Yeah. He has nothing to do with me, whatever. I just am like, he's 30, he's a little old to be involved in this high school stuff. It's very high school. And he's he's the owner and CEO of a multi million dollar company. Yeah. Like, what oh, are you wow. doing? Yeah. Yeah. I love watching. Like thirties is old now. When did that happen? <laughs> yeah. The drama channels are hilarious and fun to watch, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I live. Yeah, like they get so serious about it, it gives me like. No, that's what I'm like. There's people. Okay, there's stormtroopers in Portland, and you guys are bitching about a dude that makes lipstick. Yeah, exactly. Like whatever. We're snatching, we're snatching people into vans. <laughs> And they're unmarked, and these people are in uniforms with no name right. tape. But let's talk about eyeshadow, right? Because that's the worst thing in the world. What we're doing it's right shitty now. stuff about some people. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> well, this yeah. is literally <laughs> about to do <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> it it is troubling that <laughs> we are we are having this conversation and about to do eye makeup. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> Or not. You can blame me. I brought it up. But we we don't pretend to be anything other than what we are. It's true. It's very true. And I we do. also do bring I do. up I don't stuff talk. that bothers us. Yeah. So I, do. I don't talk. So yeah. I, and on the next show, we'll talk about AOC and Yoho. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <Can> we? <laughs> I'm so Whoa. done with government. <laughs> so depressing. That speech she gave, though. It was. Oh my. It was good. And it was much needed. Yeah. At the end, I was like, yes. 
Yeah. Okay, so what should we do first? Uh, should we start with, well, I guess start with the eyes, because the eyes have it. And I've taken my glasses off, so this, this should be a lot of fun. Okay. Okay, so, so first. Now, we, do we care if it looks good? <laughs> We're not I'm, using a mirror. We're I'm using the camera. <laughs> doing mine in the Okay. The yeah, that's the trick is that's this the is, idea. This is literally like old school, old school guy yeah, where we like, didn't give a damn what it looked like. Right. It was like backstage in some podunk. Well, I shouldn't say podunk. <laughs> Small girls <laughs> club with no bathroom, doing makeup before you're going on. Yeah. yeah. My, my hardest makeup application for an event was in some sort of sports arena and they had no dressing rooms and no bathroom. Like there was a bathroom, but it was like all the way across the thing and the dressing room was like all the way over here. And I'm like, I can't fit all my stuff in this like tiny little bathroom. And then I'm trying to do my makeup and there's no mirrors. So it's literally just a changing room for a sports team. And- Kind of awesome. It, it was crazy because I'm, I'm getting changed too and all of a sudden like one of the wrestlers comes walking in and I'm like oh hi, hi. Hello. <laughs> like, I How thought this you? was the ladies dressing room I guess it's unisex so here we go <laughs> one eye done Woo. whoa check you out I really can't tell what this looks like <laughs> it's all good looks all right I, I have to remember which eyes which while I look in the camera. Yeah. That's handy. Yeah, because otherwise I'm like jabbing myself in the wrong eye, which is always fun. Well, that's why I'm not doing mascara because I will stab myself. Yeah, I'm not doing mascara either. You know what? I totally want to get those magnetic eyelashes though. I oh man, right? <laughs> yeah, so cool. I feel like I would still screw those up. <laughs> well, it does have like the liquid eyeliner, which my hands yeah. shake. I'm not very steady because mm -hmm. thanks autoimmune disease. Um, anyway, so I would probably screw those up too, to be perfectly honest. It's all good. We won't judge. There's no judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone right now. I'm judging myself. I'm not, I'm not judging. Candy, this might be the girliest thing we've ever done ever Holly, yeah I, I, <laughs> this is like the sleepovers i always i always, wish always I yeah <laughs> like i wish i would have had girlfriends in school I well did. i i had girlfriends but like nobody wanted to climb trees and nobody wanted to like goth up and i was the goth in my high school so i had like only a couple of girlfriends and this isn't kind of really what we did yeah yeah, I don't. My friends, I had girlfriends too, but we didn't do this. <laughs> Just kind of. I never uh, did this. So, speaking of that, Sarah, how did you get involved? Oh, first off, why don't you tell us for those that don't know? I just assume what, everybody knows Tara. I assume everybody knows <laughs> you. But you are a writer and yeah. you are also a musician. Correct. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so let's see. I really had no idea what I wanted to do in life at all. And I used to write a lot of poetry and I would write a lot of short stories and stuff. And in fact, that's kind of what me and my friends did. Um, my friend Shelby in particular, she'd spend the night like on a Friday night or whatever. And we would write stories back and forth. Right. Like I would start or she would start and then we'd pass it off to the next picture and back and forth. And of course they always involved like cute boys and off clubs and punks and Right. You know, as you do. And right. so I really I really didn't have any inkling towards anything. Mm hmm Particularly. And um of course I met a ton of people who were musicians. And every, at, at that time, there was no, like, goth scene. It was just, like, everybody kind of that was an outcast hung out together. So it was, like, skaters, punks, metal kids. Right. All 
you, I'm sure you have the exact same thing. Um, Pickens were slim in rural Ohio. Rural um, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> How did we end up here? <laughs> yeah, like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of hung out with, with my friends and stuff and met some dudes that were in a band and was kind of one of those things like, yeah, we should start a band. And um, I decided to like, okay, well, we'll use my poetry or whatever. And so it kind of started from there and we did some recording. And when... You know, you remember pen pals back when everybody had pen pals from all over the Yeah, place? yeah. Those little friendship books and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I had like a million pen pals. And this guy sent me a copy of Ionia on cassette. Nice. And so I'm writing him back and I like popped the tape in and I was just like, <gasps> like literally like shocked me. Like I have to know this person. I know that feeling. And, yeah. So I, um wrote him back and I'm like, who is this? Like, do you, have a, do you have an address for him? And he's like, no, I don't, but you could probably write to the record label. So I wrote this project and Sam himself wrote me back and was like, the fact that you don't have his address tells me that you have a dubbed copy of this cassette because his address is on the cassette. But he did give me Mike's address. <laughs> <laughs> is that not oh. hilarious? So, um, I, I wrote Mike a fan letter and we just started writing back and forth and stuff. And I would send him tapes that from me and my, from my band. And he asked me to come out and sing on a couple tracks and I kind of just never left. So. <laughs> and then the writing thing, um, you know, I used to read a ton and I would always read these books and I'm like, Oh, the characters aren't doing what I want them to do. They're not like thinking like me. And the one night I had this really detailed dream and it was like a movie. And when I got up, I was like telling Mike about it. And like about halfway through, I'm like, I'm just going to write this because it's a good story. And so that's how Violent Violet came about. Oh, wow. So it was just kind of like I was tired of reading other people's stuff that didn't give me the feels I wanted, I guess. And mm -hmm. so I kind of decided to do it myself pretty much how I got started too. <laughs> yeah. So which one of your books that you've written is your favorite? Oh, probably Violent Violet just because it's like the first one and I like the like cozy feel of it where her world is still very small. Mm -hmm. She has her little hand, you know, count them on your fingers group of friends and she doesn't know any of this other stuff. And it's just very cozy and, and it reminds me of being young and like having your friends and everything's like so crazy and everything's bigger than it needs to be. And you know, the drama is just insane and blah, blah, blah. And it's before she really knows anything about anything. And now her world is just so big that it's nice to go back to like that kind of cozy feeling of beginning. Her world is amazing. Like, I don't know. It's it's like when I read Susie's books, um, there's just a different depth to them than I get from other books, really. Um, I want to live there in her world. Yeah. I mean, it's like these are people that you could know. Like, they're not contrived at all like this is like people that you could hang out with well i try really hard and i'm sure susie does too like i want them to be real people i want them to have real reactions to things that a normal person would have mm -hmm. like so many times when you're either watching a movie or reading a book or whatever and like somebody meets a vampire and they're just like they don't have questions yeah like, why would you not you you're you're standing there with an immortal being who has been alive for a very long time. Wouldn't you have like questions like, what is the meaning of life? Like, you know? Yeah. I, I just, so I, I don't see that very often. I don't see that in 
movies and stuff where people are asking questions like you would ask. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I try to make them relatable and even though it's an unrealistic scenario, or is it? Maybe it's not. Um, I don't know. I just try to make it so. <laughs> realistic, I guess. Try. Oh, you guys, it's so hot. My eye makeup is melting. Uh, I have the air conditioner window unit going um, because it's disgusting here. Yeah, I've got the AC pumping and it's not doing jack nor shit. <laughs> I feel bad. You guys are over here doing all this like intricate. I'm like, done. This isn't intricate. Oh, uh, this is definitely not intricate. This is this is I'm putting it on in the camera. <laughs> yeah, this is what can I do in the camera without stabbing stabbing me. myself. <laughs> is that what you were gonna say too? Yeah. Uh, Okay, so, um, what are some of your favorite memories? Just in general? Yeah. Just like, tell us about being little Tara. Oh. (laughs) Little Tara. How you doing over there, little Tara? Little Tara, you know, different human being, I think. Um, I don't know. I was just a normal, like, really happy kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of miss that. Like, nothing is serious. <laughs> I'm sure you guys get that too. Like, everything's so serious now. Like, I miss mm-hmm. just like it being summer and like running in dandelion fields and. Oh man, I'm not miss- hearing about anything but playing and. Where did you grow up? Did you grow up in the same house your whole life? Yeah, I grew up in Manaway, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's about like, I would say halfway between like Youngstown, Cleveland, and Akron. So we were close enough to the city that it wasn't like really out in the sticks or anything like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's ex urban. Ohio, not far from Kent State University. So that was like it, the teenage years. You went to Kent because that's where all the cool kids were, and we would like go and hang out there, um, okay. looking for the cool punk kids and goths and whatever. And uh, I don't know. Was, I guess just normal, just normal. There was nothing crazy. And then I guess in high school, when things kind of, you know, once you kind of discover like the whole punk thing and everything. It was very uh, weird for that area. Right. So the presumption was always like, you were a slut, you were a Satanist. Yeah. It's like so far from the truth that it's not even funny. You must be into witchcraft. You right. hear that? Or you that worship the us, devil. That brings us into the next question, which is what have been people's biggest misconception about you? I think the whole goth thing in general, because, I mean, obviously I have some of that aesthetic, you know, I had black hair, I wore lots of black eyeliner and stuff, and when I was younger, younger, like early teens, definitely I would say, even though that wasn't a word that was used back then really to describe people, at least not where I lived, um, it was more applicable, I guess, then, but like, I want to say from like 23 on, I would not call myself a goth. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I can probably name two Christian death songs, and I'm not saying that because I, I don't, like, I think I'm too cool for school or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it's just not my thing, like, I don't, I can't tell you, I don't know, I can't tell you one Misfit song. Which is another funny thing because everybody associates me with Glenn Danzig now. Hold on now, you you actually played with the Misfits when they came back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because I was at that show. <laughs> oh my God, you were at that show. That's great. Yeah, it was yeah. 1995. It was a typo negative. Misfits uh, made a surprise 
like rejoining appearance and it was yeah. you and Electric Hellfire Club yeah. before them and I missed you because yeah. my friend Mike had a drug problem and <laughs> we didn't make it in time and I was like you awful human being and I never ever forgave him for that like you know how many years is it now 30 I never forgave him for that, <laughs> that we missed yeah. Lysia because that was the one yeah. band I actually was going to see and typo but yeah it, so I mean I guess the big mis biggest misconceptions is probably that whole thing um that I'm like we're like super goth or whatever and so when we did tour it was, we were kind of set up for failure in a way because the label would like kind of market you like you're a goth and then we would be put in these goth nights and then we would show up and sometimes I'd be wearing like Adidas track pants and a hoodie and Mike would have like blue jeans and a cowboy boots on with a big beard and like long hair and people would be like who the hell like why are you even here <laughs> and there was just it, it was just awkward because you're not giving them what they want because they wanted you to look a certain way because that's apparently super important in goth music. Which I never oh, these days now, yeah. Back then, you know, not so much. Interesting yeah. is most of the bands that like started the whole goth thing don't consider themselves goth musicians. I know. It's just like, it, I guess because your music is sort of in, like moody and like insular looking and whatever. Mm -hmm. goth? I don't know but anyway that's a whole nother topic of discussion but um yeah so that's kind of probably the biggest misconception is that we're like super goth or whatever and we're really just not mm -hmm. uh, I have nothing against that whole thing obviously like most of my friends are goth or metal goth or whatever but like I don't listen to the classical goth music that we're supposed Billy to Billy Squire's not classic goth? <laughs> well, <laughs> if I'm a goth, then he is, because mm. I like it, then. Yeah. It's in goth, but yeah, I don't know. That whole thing. And then also, like, I think that now the whole political thing, people have this perception of me that I'm like this hardcore liberal, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm a common sense person. It's common sense to me isn't Democrat or Republican. It's common sense. Exactly. Right. Mor morality isn't Republican or Democrat. It's morality. Mm -hmm. And so I've had a lot of people dismiss me, like, you're just a dumb libtard or whatever. And I'm like, you don't, you don't know me. Like, I never voted for a Democrat ever prior to the last presidential election. So I was dismissed back then, you know, before it was like, well, you're just a Republican, right wing, whatever, which wasn't true. I'm just, I vote for who I think is right, mm -hmm. whether they're Democrat, Republican, whatever. And have I made bad choices? Probably. Will I make bad choices again? Probably. But the important thing is that you vote, you participate in the system. It's so yeah. important. Yeah. Whatever you believe, you, you need to participate. I agree. And if you don't, you have no right to complain, honestly. But I don't know. So those are kind of the things that I've had misconstrued about me, which people think what they want to think. It's just aggravating sometimes because you're just genuinely who you are. And then people try to put their crap onto you. And then when you yeah. don't, don't live up to it, you let them down and it's like but I didn't present that to you so right that's your fault that you wanted me to be that and I'm not not mine so yeah mm -hmm. oh are we doing lipstick now yeah I, moved <laughs> I couldn't decide between the red or the black so uh, I have a theme <laughs> So uh, I have a question. So aside from the Lycia stuff that you've done, yeah, 
tell us about your solo projects because I don't think they get nearly enough airplay. You really don't. Well, there's probably a good reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My music is so weird. Um, I, I think that, and I haven't done music in so long, but I think initially I just wanted a sort of different release because I did have tons of ideas and stuff. And like Lycia is so Mike's baby mm -hmm. and it's very like specific and there's a, there's a specific way that Lycia works. And I'm like, Mike is very scientific minded and like mathematical and I'm about as far off from that as possible. So when I work with Lycia, it's, it's a very specific framework. Everything has to fit mathematically and whatever. And so for my soul stuff, I liked it because it was just, it didn't, nothing mattered. It didn't matter anything, nothing mattered. So that was kind of like very freeing to me. Now I hear my first, first of all, I don't listen to my own music, but on the occasion that I accidentally get tagged on something and I'm like, I'll click on it. Um, it's so weird to hear it to me, to me now because it's, it's just goofy to me. I don't know. Not to say I don't like my own music, but it's just so bizarre to go back to it. Mm -hmm. Because the, especially the first one is such a different person from who I am now. Like, I was such a baby when I recorded that album. And so I can hear the like babiness of it. Like, oh my God, I would never do that now. <laughs> just that I'm discrediting it because it is what it is. But like, there's certain elements of it that I'm like, I, I know that person from back then, but I don't relate to her very much anymore. The second album is a bit more comparable, I guess, to who I am now. But even then, I'm like, okay, that song is way too long, girl. Why did you wake that song that long? It's like, all I hear is all the stuff like, I want to cut that song by like four minutes. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that, that with our art I think that's a big yeah. part of like being an artist is as we're creating what we create it's almost like I know for me it's like I'm exercising something like I'm yeah totally. I'm putting something that is bothering me or just some big emotion yeah and I'm I'm processing it and putting it to the side yeah so that it's not an issue like you know what I mean it's for my mental health it's the best thing possible yeah and and a, another thing too is that like with Lycia everything filters through Mike and so if I do something that's wonky he'll be like let's do it again or whatever and so with the writing or my soul stuff it's a hundred percent on me Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm way more critical of it because there's no other filter that it goes through. It just goes straight for me out to the world. And so I'm like, really, all those choices were 100% mine. <laughs> so I'm way more anxious about it than like, I'm never apprehensive at all about Lycia. Like I don't get self-conscious about Lycia at all, but my own stuff is like, I cringe just because I'm like, every time I'm looking, reading through a book and I find an error, I'm like, oh my God, it stresses me out so bad. Cause I'm like, it's so cringy to me. So That's I'm not a, a very good. good judge of myself because I'm, I will okay. tell you that you have the voice of an angel and your lyrics are genius. Aww. It's true. Thank you. Speaking Thank you. of lyrics. Is there any lyric that you've heard or any song that you've heard where you've been like, that is amazing. Why did I not write that? So many, like, there's so many perfect songs to me. Like, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. But like, just starting with my, like a couple friends I have, mm -hmm. like Sarah Tams, I don't know if you guys know her from Black Mare, Eyes of Gemini. Black Horse Mass, I don't know. She's got a million projects. Mm -hmm. Her whole aesthetic to me is just so perfect, like musically, lyrically, and sonically. And I'm just like, it's so freaking good. And like Chelsea Wolf, same thing. Like, just 
I can't, I'm like, how does this person have all that, you know? And it's so aesthetically and sonically and lyrically perfect. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th that's just two examples. Obviously, there's a million examples, but yeah, it's, that's a whole nother thing where you're just like, why do I even bother? <laughs> like, why am I even <laughs> attempting this? Because this is, these other people are so, and I'm sure they probably do the same thing to themselves. Like, they're probably like, I could have done that better. You know what I mean? We've all got imposter syndrome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even know that was a thing until my one friend was like, you have you totally have this. And then I went and read about it and I was like, oh my God, I just thought I was an insecure loser. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about it from a name. Because <laughs> I have it bad. <laughs> Me too. It's hard. I know. Yeah. Like I can pump other people's work all day long. I can hype you. I'll be your slave of slave all day long. You are amazing at that. You're so supportive. Oh. Like I know, like right now I'm like, okay, I really need to start put like write an ad or something for these books because nobody even knows they exist outside of a handful of people because I can't make myself promote myself. And I'm like, I really gotta get past that, but I it makes me I mean, I can't even talk about it. I'm all cringing inside thinking about Do you have an Amazon like author page? I do. Awesome. And I don't do anything with it because I'm like, yeah, but you know what? We'll, we'll put your link down yeah. in the description box for our five followers or whatever we have. <laughs> our, I think our we're vast, up to 11. Our vast audience. <laughs> <laughs> I think but, we're up yeah. to 11 now. Um, yeah. We, nice. we are up to 160 people, 160 likes on the page. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. And 11 subscribers on the channel. Thank you. It's so weird to me that people want to like pay attention to us talk. I think after the makeup thing, they're probably just going to be like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> What's wrong with them? <laughs> Why are we here? You guys look great. <laughs> you, look What's that? you guys look great. I don't think it looks like you didn't have a mirror. It's old school goth makeup. <laughs> it's um yeah there's nothing it's intricate interesting. about it we all have our own version it's true yeah we, have, we each have our own interpretation of same well that's because when we came up the goal was to be an individual and not yeah, look like to be different cut out yeah that's why and, and to be comfortable so yeah. eat like this i'm not wearing vinyl I'm not wearing a corset. <laughs> I'm not prancing around I looking like a big anyway. We got like leggings and a band and anyway. some socks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Like I today I've got a pair of like khaki shorts on and, and this thing, which has like a shelf bra in it. And I'm I'm letting it all hang out. I, I am wearing a dress because it's hot and it has pockets. <laughs> my my shirts have pockets. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a birthday party to go to this afternoon, and it was outside, so I was worried that I would wilt like a flower. Right. And <laughs> I didn't, so that was good. But um, yeah, literally like ran in the door, grabbed something to eat. My sister called me, and I stayed on the phone, and I was like, I gotta go! And she's like, why? I was like, I have to record a, a new episode for Two Women Left Unsupervised. And she's like, you're so weird! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you've lived with me for how long? <laughs> I don't even know why that's weird, though. Like, why would that be weird? Because siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, siblings totally call you out on your BS all okay. the time. Absolutely. Now, yep. um, hmm. I think we got all of them. I won't, no, I won't we have one more. On. We have one more. Have one more? Who was your favorite person to perform with? Oh, yeah. Uh, live or either recording? recording. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to deny the whole typo thing because typo. Yeah. Um, everyone's always like, oh, what was it like being in the studio with them? I'm like, 
don't know. Didn't go in the studio with him. <laughs> Literally, I sent my files to Josh via AIM. Remember that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't get to actually go in the studio with him, but like doing the shows and stuff with them was obviously cool because it was such a next level thing. You know, we were doing our regular old tour and then you go and you're playing with them and they're like three tour buses at the time I think mm -hmm. and just it was wild like well, it was then, next level too it must have been odd because I'm just picturing right I didn't get to see it live but picturing Peter Steele all six foot eight or whatever he was and you're what five foot two yeah <laughs> <laughs> He literally, like, literally was the largest human being I'd ever seen at that point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I still yet haven't seen anybody in person that large, but yeah, it was kind of weird. But um, I don't know. So that was obviously a, a highlight. But also, like, doing my, there's so many different little projects I did. I really loved um, the, the project I did with Dirge. Um, and of course black happy day which was my side project with timothy um brenner and i don't know i've done so many fun things i have some lipstick smeared all over my face a little bit yeah you know it, it comes with the territory we Robert literally Smith. applied makeup in the dark <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know so there's just so many cool things like I don't know. I guess those are my favorites. So far. So far, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, so what's what's upcoming for for you? What projects are are in the works? We have a split single that's supposed to come out with somebody, but I'm not going to talk about that because I don't know any of the details yet. Um, so that's the only real life see a thing going on. Um, I'm. I don't know how long the book I'm currently writing is going to be because it's already over 220 pages long and I don't even know where it's going yet. So I'm like, <laughs> it's going to be, I'm kind of wondering, like, I don't, you girls are probably a good person, good people to ask this question. You know, like soap operas, they're ongoing stories every single day. And I'm like, this book is such a soap opera to me. I'm like, I should figure out a way to do it where instead of it just being one book, a way to like dispense it like a series, you know yeah, what I mean? You like chat books. I ha make a blog post. Like yeah. make it into like a recurring, like a serial. You know yeah. what I mean? Like how they used to do serial novels. Right. I need to figure out something like that because there's so many, there, and that's another thing why I like my first book is more comfortable because it was just such a tiny little crew of people. This one, there's so many people in it, and I want to tell all their stories, and I'm like, this book is going to be like 900 pages long. Well, that's because you have, you have not only the Violet, Violet series, yeah, but then you have the Black Owl series. Right. And they're all- those folks. And then you have Ilya and her crew. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a lot of people. To, how do you I'm keep like that it. Yeah, and you have your lichens, yeah. Mm -hmm. Obsessed with the Woolrich. <laughs> yes, those guys, and they're connected now too. So I mean, how do you keep all that straight in your brain? I don't really think I do. <laughs> I'm always like, wait a minute, like trying to hook up timelines. It's so hard because you're like, okay, this person's story ended right here, but we're in this timeline over here. So how do I make it make sense? And I'm sure I screwed up. I have to be, I have to screw it up at some point, but I try really hard. I've not. read all of them. Um, you're doing fine. I like, hope so. I try I really know. hard. Like, I'm always afraid I'm messing up someone's eye color, too. Because, you know, there's, like, random people, and you're like, I'm like, like okay, what color right. were you? <laughs> Dorky. Maybe you can make a chart. Like maybe you need like an Excel spreadsheet for like. I I actually really do like, but again that's work 
and, and <laughs> you want to be fun. You don't want right? you don't want to do the work of the work. You want to do the fun of the work. Right, exactly. And there, there again goes the whole like I don't promote myself because I I know that that's going to be work, research, and like labor intensive for me to figure out how I want to do it and whatever. And I'm like, okay, I only have this minute amount of time a day to work on fun stuff mm -hmm. and do I want to spend it researching how to write a good ad or or how to fix a manuscript layout or do I want to just write a story mm -hmm. like I wish I had like a clone so that they could do all the crap I don't want to do but or like a, <laughs> slave or something I don't know that sounds it's terrible I don't either. mean it that way you guys feel like you have lipstick on your teeth? I, I like do. On my <laughs> like, I feel like somehow I got streaks across my face, but I think it's just... I don't boring. see any. Yeah, I'm not seeing any streaks. No, you look good. <laughs> I just feel like I've got all the lipstick on my teeth. Yeah, wow. same. But you don't. And you guys are so pale. Look how tan I look. How did that happen? I'm not pale at all. <laughs> We're in the Northeast. <laughs> I'm like so. Why are you red? This is my tan. <laughs> I've got tan lines. <laughs> I was in Ohio too, but unfortunately, living out here in Arizona, it's like so What's that? I don't go outside, so I don't know how this is happening. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh wow. Oh, are you sunburned? I'm hot. Ah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> That'll do it. I get those. It's the yep. it's the time. It is the time. We are moving into Crondom. <sighs> it was oh. fun, maiden and mother. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the maiden times. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Like you know, nobody ever really talks about how completely insane your body is. And even doctors don't quite understand it. So like when no. you, I don't know how many years I was going to the doctor saying something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. Oh no, there's it's nothing normal. Wrong. Great, like, you're too young. You're too young, and I'm like, okay, well finally they're not telling me I'm too young anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, they don't tell you weird stuff like sometimes your tongue feels funny. <gasps> yes, or yeah. your mouth like. My mouth just lately, the past few weeks, is constantly dry. That's why I'm yeah. sucking on this Snapple like I am. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I am always thirsty. Yeah. And I have geographic tongue. Uh huh. I never had that until Dirk was born. And then when he was a baby, he got a spot on his tongue. And I took him to the doctor, and they're like, oh, it's just geographic tongue. So he and I got geographic tongue at the same time. I don't know if. He gave it to me in utero, or I, very strange. Is it, what is it? It's contagious? Uh-uh. She has, like, she's shown pictures of it on her face. Oh. She has, like, a map on her tongue. You put a map on your tongue, and, like, sometimes it's triggered by food. Like, if you eat something acidic. You have a really <laughs> long tongue. That's, <laughs> mine's short and stubby. No, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not like a, it's, there's nothing scary about it. It's just a weird hormone thing or mm -hmm. food thing. Weird. I don't know. But it's weird that I never had it and then Dirk had it as an infant. And Does it I hurt? It. it doesn't hurt, but you know how when you eat something super hot and your tongue burns? Yeah. That's kind of how it feels like. Ooh, All the time? Your tongue feels, when it's, yeah, kind of. Hmm. Like it feels super dry and like it's burnt. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Bodies are strange. Like Bodies I have are. a lot of symptoms because my autoimmune diseases have autoimmune diseases. Like right. I'm sure people know that. But like I've had doctors look at my file and they're like, you know, if we told someone about you, they wouldn't think you were real. Because oh. I have so many different things. It's like and, a rock. <laughs> yeah, and I'll go in and they'll be like, well, we don't know what's causing this symptom. Right. Like, and don't but, you get the impression sometimes that they're 
they're kind of like you're a, you're just a hypochondriac and you're like making stuff up or something. Yep. Like I, I've gotten mad a lot where they like I don't like to take medicine because I can. I've had to go to the emergency room so many times from some random pill that they that's not supposed to cause any weirdness, but it causes it in me. And then a friend of mine shared an article with me saying that people with type O blood type process medicine differently yes, than we do and so maybe that's why i don't know but i, know. I get panicked when the doctor's like here take this you know whatever i'm like no. well my daughter actually did um sorry i lost my words for a minute my daughter actually did a report in school on how doctors treat women and their pain and their illnesses and it's like there's proven studies that show that doctors don't take women as seriously as they take men yeah, like you're being sent away and sent away for stuff and told that it's just normal or it's just hormones or it's just right. in our heads right and they won't treat us like they treat men and i've gone in and been like in pain like in pain where i'm crying and i have a pretty high pain tolerance but have a lot going on and they've just been like oh well you just need some tylenol and i'm like at this point tylenol is not going to cut it like mm -hmm. are you kidding me well try motrin and i'm like how about we try morphine like <laughs> well, and they, they kind of do treat you like you're you're just trying to get drugs you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and i finally found a doctor that doesn't treat me that way and it is a revelation and you know what it's a woman yeah you know yeah i don't i mean it's like i don't like being sexist or whatever but i definitely notice a difference but then again too some women are just like suck it up i go through it too yeah yeah, yeah they are also like whereas a guy like well they don't really know yeah well i had a neurologist a male neurologist that um i have all these symptoms where i have a hard time feeling my right side and I can't feel my feet like at all ever. And he's just like, oh, well, that's your autoimmune disease. Wait, what? I have spinal stenosis in my neck and I have arthritis. And I have bone actually pushing against my spinal cord. Yeah. Right. And he's like, oh, it's your autoimmune disease. And I finally got sick of him telling me that because he was telling me that for years. And I went and got tested. Um, and they did all these tests and they found that my eyes like don't track right. Um, I have something going on in my inner ear and I can't balance. And there's some sort of disconnect in the nerves where my nerves don't fire properly. And that's why I'm in so much pain all the time. Like they did some serious tests all over my body and like it lit up, you know? And, and he didn't want to take the time to bother to even get me these tests. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I've been super fortunate with my doctors here, but you know, it's, you get to a point where you just feel like I'm not even going to mention all this stuff because you just, I, like I, for myself, I'm like, how do you explain that weird feeling that you get? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't tell you what it, I can't explain it. So I just, I'm like, I feel weird. I don't know what, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Like something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what. Right. I don't know why. You went to school wrong. for this. Fix me. Yeah. Like, right. right. It's so weird. And it's so hard when they tell you, but you can't be fixed. There's nothing that they can do. You, they can just treat the symptoms. Yeah. And that, that took me years to adjust to. Well, because you want to feel better. Like you want there to be an answer, like do X, Y, Z and you'll feel better. Yeah. And there's, there's no X, Y, Z. There's no X, Y, Z. I can only feel less bad. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. That sucks. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to whine and complain or anything. I just no. figure it's the three of us just, yeah, it's not coming across that it, you know, <laughs> I will say that since I started doing like walking and Tai Bo and stuff, I feel so much better. Yeah, same. I've lost a lot of weight. 
Um, and I, I did a whole lot of walking while I was in England and, you know, I was walking with my cane and I couldn't do it every day, but I did it and it does help. Yeah. It does help. Even just yeah. like mentally, it does something mentally where. Mm -hmm. Because I was, yeah, I was out, I was in the woods a lot of the time. I was seeing things. I was taking photographs and, you know, there's, there are some things that are just so breathtakingly beautiful and they're like small, small things. Yeah. And they make whatever you're going through seem insignificant. Yeah. You know That's what I mean? True. And I know for me, like I daydreaming for me is a is a complete escapism. And so when I walk, it's almost like a meditation form of meditation where I I'll go through whole scenarios in my head. Like I've worked through so many things for books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like whole conversations and everything. And so having that escapism mm -hmm. is so like essential. And, and now that it's so hot and stuff, like you can't walk here. Even here, yeah. it's still hot. Early in the morning, it's too hot. So like I'm missing that escapism thing. Mm -hmm. And like Taibo is a different kind of escapism because it's hard to think about shit that you're stressed about when you're trying to kick your leg up. Yeah really fast yeah <laughs> <laughs> different kind of thing but it, it's just as effective in a different way i think yeah plus i'm obsessed with silly boy you are i am like i he's so cool to me <laughs> so weird I'm like he's so cool Susie, what are you doing you've lost a lot of weight lately too um, I've lost, uh, let's see, I started out at 177 pounds. As of yesterday, I'm 150. That's so, awesome. Good job. Yeah, uh, it How is are you doing it? Weight Watchers, exercise, um, basically not having the stuff in the house that I want to eat. Mm. Like, I am an ice cream fiend, and we do have ice cream in the house. Um, what I've been doing instead is trying to think what is it in the ice cream that I'm actually craving mm -hmm. is it the sugar is it the sweet am I just bored um right. and then going from there so I've I've been making ice cream out of overripe bananas with chocolate um with cocoa powder and monk fruit sweetener and some it's vanilla good. and it's really good and and doing um Faya zero percent fat um greek yogurt mixed in so i just threw all that in the food processor and then stuck it into the fridge and that was what i was looking for was the chocolate and the peanut butter mm -hmm. that was in the ice cream so i was like ah chocolate and peanut butter why am i looking for chocolate and peanut butter <laughs> i don't See, know the boys, the boys in my house have <laughs> cookies and cupcakes and all of that kind of carb stuff downstairs. And I have to like swerve myself to go over and get my mangoes and my oranges and yeah, my good for me stuff. And it's hard because carbs are good. Um, well, with the chocolate and peanut butter thing, it's, it's an iron thing for sure. Mm. Um, I crave chocolate when I need iron. Mm -hmm. And so... And, and protein too. Yeah. And you know, it's, I've got these, these snacks, undercover quinoa, and it's like 16% of your iron for the day mm -hmm. and it's quinoa. So it's like super healthy and it's dark chocolate, like 75% dark chocolate with sea salt. So I, I eat one of those and I'm great. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, this is exactly what I needed. Or I make the banana ice cream. Um, you know, but I, I kind of have a better idea of why I'm looking for that. Plus I started getting the Weight Watcher snacks too, because I am a snackaholic, especially living in the snack food capital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, I'll smell potato chips cooking or I'll smell pretzels cooking. And I'm like, oh man, all I want is potato chips and pretzels now. Mm -hmm. And so now I have boxes of healthy potato chips that are, they're baked instead of fried and you know, they've got, like, the barbecue potato chips um, from Weight Watchers are pretty decent. You know, they're, they're rice and potato flour, so it's sort of like a barbecue Pringles. Mm. Um, okay. 
but they really load on the barbecue flavoring, which I love because really that's the whole point of eating a barbecue potato chip is the stuff right. at the bottom. <laughs> so the stuff at the bottom of the bag is actually the stuff they're using on the potato chip. So, I mean, or you could just get a bottle of barbecue sauce and a spoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do yeah. not recommend. I would not try. <laughs> but yeah. it is a thought. So yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. Um, I've been doing more yoga. And like Tara said, with the, the walking, um, I walk in the house because our the way our house is set up, you can walk from here all the way through, through the foyer, into the dining room, into the kitchen, and back into here. So I can just walk around in a big giant That's circle cool. on laps. Yeah. Mine's um, not set up that way. Do you guys find it hard to like fit in work and your creative stuff and your family? Like, I, where's the time in the day? I know. I don't um, sleep. <laughs> you just don't sleep. Yeah, yeah, I don't sleep anymore. I don't sleep well either. Yeah, I my sleep has really sucked lately, so... And honestly, like I've, I've kind of dried up a little bit as far as writing goes. So my creativity is this right now. Yeah. Uh, same. I haven't, yeah. I haven't done any like painting or drawing in, in quite a while. Um, I've been really kind of focused on the photography. Yeah. I've done a lot of that. And, and then the day job, I mean, it's, it's my day job. So, I mean, I love it. And so that, that's easy for me because I'm doing it for somebody else. You know, so it's that, it's that shift. It's not for me, it's for them. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for me to dive into that and get stuff done. Mm -hmm. How do you do it, Sarah? Do we, well, for one, uh, thankfully, um, my company let me adjust my schedule. So I actually start work at 4 a.m. I get up at like 3.40, which is insane. I, that's like, I wasn't used to not even go to sleep at 3.40 back in the day but anyway right. um so i get up and I'm, so i'm done with work by 12 30. nice so yeah it's kind of cool but what i've been doing is like when i get off work kind of chill out a little sometimes i'll write a little bit then mm -hmm. uh, or i'll go straight and do my exercise and then try to write after but it for me and i'm sure it's the same for you guys it's like it kind of you're creativity sort of comes in waves like sometimes I'll be stupid like I can just keep writing 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 yeah. writing and then other days I'm just not in the mood for it and like I can't get in the mood for it so I'm just like okay well today's not the day I yep. try to I always kind of get panicking like what if it never comes back but then I kind of feel like if you're not in the mood for it whatever you were going to write is going to be crappy like it won't be good exactly. so whatever but it's going to be really interesting now with school starting because I'm going to have to be working and being a school teacher. Yeah, the homeschooling it's thing. I really don't want my kids to go back to school. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. Son, my son is scheduled to go back. Um, they're going to be doing masks and they're going to be do doing socially distance things and stuff like that. So depending on how the lockdown stuff goes because we may be heading back for lockdown again because we've got a lot of people that are just like this is all a hoax and i'm like yeah you're that's, right why, why not <laughs> it's 2020 <laughs> why not <laughs> the, adult, the adults are acting that way right so this yeah. is my issue with it right yeah. the adults are acting that way with it why won't the why are they expecting that the kids will be behaved better and also wait i don't want to rant never mind <laughs> I yeah. did, I stop, did I stop the recording? <laughs> no, but like, why are we asking teachers to, I mean, come on, man. Well, That's, these kids are going to be bringing whatever they get at school home to their family. Yeah. And the teachers are going to be bringing it home to their families. And like, it's, we're going to be right back where we were. It's so, such a bad idea. Yeah. They're talking about here, if they open, they'll do like, they have A days and B days here. So they'll have one set of students in this building on one day and one set in the building on the other day. And I'm just like, and they're gonna be touching each other and the high school kids are gonna be making out in the hallway and everything's gonna be just like it was before. 
because they're children. Right. They have Weirdly, never been though, known kids, so tend to, kids tend to follow instructions better than adults a lot of the time, though. That is true. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I pitched but... it to my son like it was Halloween. I was like, you're going to get to wear your mask like it's Halloween. And he was like, oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it wasn't so bad anymore. And I'm like, okay, every single person who's ever complained about wearing a mask and wears that full latex head mask in Halloween, I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> I told AJ that he gets to be a ninja, like, all the time. And he's, yeah. he's like, all right. He wears it in the house now. He's like, all right, I'm a ninja. I'm like, all right, dude. Ninja it out. And it's, it's kind of funny because I, I got this new phone um, because my old one took a crap. And when I'm wearing a mask, so I totally forgot about this. And I went out to, to get my hair done and we were wearing the masks and everything. And, you know, everybody spread across the salon and all that fun stuff. So I went to go open up my phone to show my hairdresser or something. And it's, it's got the facial recognition to open the phone so you can't use your phone and i couldn't use it i had to type in the password and i'm like oh my god are you kidding me like it really doesn't do it but then i also put on the mario mustache today and it didn't recognize me <laughs> that's a good thing though it shows that it's working yeah but how funny is that that i stick on this fake mustache like literally the simplest stupidest disguise ever and it doesn't recognize me because there's a mustache. <laughs> You're like Superman. So what would happen if you were a dude and you had a mustache and shaved it off or vice versa? It wouldn't recognize you anymore. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. That is kind of crazy. And what if you forgot your password? <laughs> well, you're locked out. You have, to, you have to reset it. About that. Like, you have to reset funny. it. And if you've encrypted your backups, forget about it. You're never getting back in that phone. <laughs> Yeah, usually, I mean, for me, it's like I always pick something that's easy to remember because goldfish brain. <laughs> I have no memory anymore. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Everything down. And you know what? In, in today's day and age, I'm kind of glad that my memory is so crappy because I'm, I'm thankful and I'm sad about it because some days it's like I'll log in and I'll have totally forgotten all the celebrities that died in like the last year or so um and then somebody will like mention like oh you know really sad that so-and-so is gone I'm like wait what when did that happen and it's like oh that happened like 10 years ago and I'm like wait what <laughs> I was like where the hell have I been <laughs> so it's another it's another reason I think I'm in a different timeline <laughs> I'm like no obviously that didn't happen I'm in a different timeline what do they call that there's the Mandela effect yeah the Mandela yeah. effect do you believe in that Tara no and yes because are you from the berenstein universe or the berenstein universe <laughs> what did we call? we called berenstein bears yeah berenstein. yeah yeah e right yeah so what do they call them now berenstein and allegedly always been the berenstein bears yeah yeah it's it's very weird because there are like there's a bunch of those i can't and of course because of my memory i can't remember them now but i've watched those videos i've gone down that rabbit hole Mm -hmm. And I am like some for some stuff, like the whole um, Luke, I am your father. That's right. One of them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody quotes it, Luke, I am your father, but I guess he doesn't say that. No, he says something like, No, Luke. He says, Luke, anyway, I'm your father. I don't know. Yeah. There's some, I, I do like, I definitely believe in alternate dimensions mm -hmm. and timelines. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be one of those freaky conspiracy theory people either. So, because that's a whole next level thing that irritates the crap out of me. Come on, Tara. Preach Get it. fitted Tell for us. your tinfoil hat. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's you know, wearing them. I'm trying to put a, a fucking chip in you, okay? <laughs> like, seriously, do you know how big the fucking needle is to put a chip in a dog? Yeah, it's huge. Not to mention, not one person is going to, like, squeal. Out of yeah. all thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that would have to be involved in making this vaccine, no one's going to squeal. Right. But it's only, like, four people that know. Right. 
And it's that dude on the internet that put his video up on YouTube. He's got all the secrets. Well, yeah. Yeah. That goes from <laughs> high school. It never left. Right. That's because he wore his tinfoil hat and they didn't get the rays into his head. Uh -oh. Maybe because we get a flu shot, it like killed the part of our brain that has logic and reason. So we don't, we're not like, we're, we're already sheep. being. Yeah. So we're sheep because of the flu shot. That's what right. it is. I would think that people would look more to like fluoridated water more than yeah. anything else because it's, it's fluoridated. <laughs> more shit in the air. Yeah. That too. Heavy metals in the air. Oh my God. Right. There's so many other ways we could be poisoning ourselves and you're going to worry about a vaccine. Or the people <laughs> that are all like, oh, they're going to track me with this uh, vaccine. Dude, you're walking around with a smartphone. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> Amazon knows everything about you. They can send a drone to you. You were literally given a number when you were born. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but tell me again how they're going to microchip me. <laughs> yeah. you know how, like on Facebook, every once in a while, you'll see these generic posts like at 12 a.m. on March 31st, Facebook is going to set something and blah 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 and they're and i don't give you my permission i do not give you my permission <laughs> yeah some people uh, the latest one is the uh the covid tracker that yeah. Tell they're me. like i don't want to be tracked and i'm like how what <laughs> wait i haven't heard about this one what is oh that my God. it's apparently like if you sign up there's an app that's the covid tracker app mm -hmm. and it i guess it keeps track of how many cases or whatever in your area and then it basically keeps track of you too and where you're going so they know who's getting infected where right and so it's like okay well then just don't download the app yeah that's <laughs> one of my friends i actually saw a post last night and she's like if you're one of these people already telling me that you're deleting me because i'm putting this covid 19 tracker on my phone just go now and I'm like, you're on Facebook already, dumb fuck. They're already tracking everything you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they tell them it. happily. Or like those facial identification things. You post 10 trillion selfies every day. They've yeah. already got your face, dummy. Yeah. Unless you put a mustache on. <laughs> yeah, just put the mustache on. Just put the mustache on. And we'll we'll gonna take recognize. our glasses off. No one knows who I am. No, it still recognizes you without the glasses. Really? Yes, but it does not recognize you if you put a fake mustache on. <laughs> Which just like... It's the weirdest thing. I can put my mask on, it doesn't recognize me. Um, or I put this fake mustache on and it doesn't recognize me. Put glasses on or off and it does. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Ooh, your eyes, it seems like anything with your eyes would be more... Than your, yeah, than your lower face. Yeah. How oh, weird. I, I can't... But no, I mean, I guess... That's all it's getting. Yeah, I mean, let me. Yeah, but this. And your yeah, nose. I mean, I don't yeah, have my glasses on right and, now. Your nose and chin are like important, I guess. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I mean, it has you moving. Look at me around. doing weird shit on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, to get the facial recognition to work, you have to move your face around. So it's got like this circle thing that you have to be like this, and it they I'm basically like take angles. the 3D picture of your face. So even if I'm like this looking at my phone, I can still recognize my face. Kind of like the fingerprint thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I miss my fingerprint thing. I like my fingerprint thing. I don't think yeah. I would like the face thing because I'm not a big. I had of porn on my phone, and then I open it, and my kids are there, and there's my porn. Like what? No. I'm just saying, it's not very. It's not. A good thing. <laughs> What? Why would you be opening your phone with porn on it? No, I'm just saying, like, that's just an, it's just an example. Like, what if somebody sent me, like, a naked picture, right? Like, <laughs> Mr. Dude, Mr. Navy Dude, right? Oh, my what God. If you sent me Mr. Something Navy pornographic? Dude. Yeah, Mr. Navy Dude. What if you sent me something pornographic? What if you sent me a picture of his little worm? And then my face has, my, my face is recognized by the phone, and my daughter's sitting there. She doesn't need to see a penis. She's 17. I guarantee you she's probably already seen one. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't, see, she doesn't need to see weird Navy Dude's penis. She you doesn't need to see strange peen. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, I don't need to have that conversation with her. Like, Mom, why is there a dick on your phone? Like, 
Well, you know? sometimes when people really want to reach really? out to each yeah. other. <laughs> he thinks it's going to impress me, babe. <laughs> Sometimes this is gonna get me to send him money. <laughs> sometimes, sweetie, men think that this is good, and <laughs> they send naked people. Yeah, love the internet woman. <laughs> <laughs> I I used to have a neighbor who would look at porn on the regular, and his wife would come home with their kids, and every single time seemed to surprise him. So <laughs> he would just turn off the monitor. But there's then, sound. Well, he wasn't looking at like video. He was looking at the pictures. Okay. And so he would just like turn off the monitor. I guess thinking he was turning off the computer. He wasn't very tech savvy. Mm -hmm. And every single time, and they always left their windows open. And every single time I'd always hear his wife chewing him a new one because she caught him looking at porn again. again. <laughs> while they were out at I'm like, point who cares yeah like why should he not be looking at it if it's like every single day like wouldn't you either just accept it or get the hell out like yeah i think i think well, it's just like that he did it adult. again and that he's not very good at hiding it and maybe it was the kids who turned the computer on or like you well, know that's monitor on or whatever but yeah i mean like i wouldn't want the computer to be showing pictures like that to my son <laughs> yeah no i agree <laughs> but at the same time it's like okay well i wouldn't be looking at them either in any area that my son's gonna be potentially finding them it's just she should be mad at him for just being stupid yeah i think that's yeah. what the the main thing was was that she was mad and then you know part of the argument was do you think i should look like that and you know oh. he, and then, you know, being the Mensa candidate that he yeah, was, yeah. he was like, well, you know, you could work on yourself. And I'm like, no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, no! Oh. <laughs> you really want to go there? Let's go there. Yeah. Well, the, the worst part was, he was nothing to look at. <laughs> and right. then I was just like, hmm. I was like, I'm going to go make some popcorn, see where this goes. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty bad. I was just like, have you looked in the mirror lately, dude? Like, maybe she should be looking at porn, too. <laughs> no kidding. She probably was. I'm yeah. sure she was, but she was smarter about it than he right. was. So there, there you go. Just quit being stupid. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Just don't be stupid about it. Right. Ah, uh, the fun. The fun like, of everyday living. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've got mascara and all kinds of stuff on me right now. No, oh, I keep going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same. Well, I think we've, uh, we found the end point to our episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, we found the natural end. Yeah. We go out with porn. We yeah. go out with porn. Porn. As one does in 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insert dick pics here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Demonetize. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh I think if I was gonna put in anything, it would just be like a Rick Astley video. <laughs> just Rick roll. I think I'll put like giant Rick roll on people. You won't do it, you're afraid. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you're Me. afraid to edit that in. What? You won't Rick do Astley? It. Yeah, you won't do it. You're afraid. Is this, is, do I smell a challenge? <laughs> What's going do, I, on? do I smell grade school? Like, when are we going <laughs> back in time? <laughs> it doesn't work on me. <laughs> I'm not putting Rick Astley in because I don't feel like dealing with the copyright issues. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. We get copyright strikes. Yeah. Damn it. Even if it would fall under fair use, technically. Put in, like, put in Billy Blank. <laughs> 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 we should we have the two little spaces down at the bottom you could just put like random billy blank <laughs> pictures in. That'd be hilarious. i think we found our outtakes <laughs> tara, tara's gonna show us some sick moves <laughs> i totally would if i had more space right here but i'd probably break an ankle. <laughs> oh, let's not do that. 
That would be a crazy outtake. Yeah, that would. <laughs> Bloopers and outtakes. Could be, the thumbnail. <laughs> could be the thumbnail, Tara, like, kicking. <laughs> With my ankle bent like this. <laughs> Bones sticking out of jaggedy points. <laughs> oh. You're like, ow. 